Tonight on Country Squire Radio, Levat is in the air. That's right. We're talking about the Levat pipe. <laughs> and also some news about somebody who happens to be on this show. We'll talk about that in a second. We've also got a pipe question of the week. What's it about? Can't remember. We changed it three times before we decided to hit go, the go live button. <laughs> we really did. Also, we got quick fire questions and more happening right now on a returning Country Squire Radio. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD! Hey, Bo, man. Good evening, dude. Man, good evening to you, it's sir. Been a, it's been a few weeks. It has. It's kind of weird to get back in the saddle. I mean, there's just been so much going on. It's kind of uh, it's kind of out of control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there has been a lot going on, a lot of changes in people's lives. Uh, you know, this and that. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. what. Oh, is that champagne? Oh, oh you can't even. Oh! <laughs> That's great, man. What'd you expect? It's a bottle of champagne. Of course, champagne. Got, dude, that's awesome, man. Shoot. Look at that. Of course, uh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. John David Cole is now an engaged man. Dude, thank you, brother. So oh, man. Dude, this is awesome. Cheers, hey, sir. Hey, cheers. Absolutely. That's not all. That's not all. Oh, it's delicious. I love champagne. Golly. No way! Do it upright. No way! We get some, uh, some nice <laughs> floral representation here well, on dude, Country Square Radio. Dude, this is insane! It's like it, it really is. It's like uh, it would feel like I could walk down the aisle tonight. That's you know, you know I, we're missing a very important uh, component of that. But well, <laughs> who's, you know, who's not enough, here tonight? <laughs> funny enough, when uh, when I went next door to get the, uh, you know, I told them I was like, "Show me your most expensive champagne." Great. Now give me the cheapest. I know, right? Uh, when, when I went next door to get <laughs> the, the cooks, uh, baby, that's it. <laughs> but it wasn't the Andre. So you know. no, that's right. No, that's right. That's I was right. like, I need that. I need that pop. That's that what stuff I has its place too, you know. No, but see, this is the thing. When when I went in, uh, the the lady, the nice lady behind the counter, she said, "Oh, I, I saw you walking in with a bunch of roses. And now you get champagne." She's <laughs> like, "This is so sweet. What's going on?" And I said, "Oh, I mean, isn't it obvious? I'm going to ask John David to marry me." I know. <laughs> I got to tell you. I got to tell you. The look they gave me. They, everybody stopped and stared, and they were like. They were like, I knew it. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they'd had hunches for a while. Yeah. I was like, no, no, of course, uh, uh, you uh, you have oh, asked your significant other to. Uh, I sure did. Pop the question. Man, I, I did. I, I jumped. Uh, I, uh, I and she said yes. I popped the question. And she said yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Man, it's great. Uh, my my girlfriend and I have uh, just over a year now have. Um, man, we, we've this has kind of been in the works for a little while, but we uh, decided finally to. Uh, make it official and she was surprised you know it was great we went on a trip to go visit her parents who live in new england and uh it, man it was just it was awesome because uh you know they we, we there was picturesque we were in front of a lighthouse and <laughs> you know there's uh crashing waves behind us the winds blowing and all this stuff and it, it, unfortunately she was like extremely cold you know and so <laughs> i had i had to force her to like linger in this uh in this position for a little while longer uh even though i could tell she wanted to go inside and finally i was like <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I was like, okay, we better do this now, or I, I'm going to miss my window of opportunity here. Oh, so, man. Uh, man, it was it was great. We uh, we really enjoyed it. It was up in on the coast of Maine at the Nubble Lighthouse, just really Ooh, yeah. really pretty. And then uh, her folks actually live in New Hampshire, so we we drove over there after that. So um, it was it was really great. But yeah, man, I'm very very fortunate. And uh, you know, the past two weeks uh, post engagement have already been uh out of control it, it, <laughs> it has been out of control so just uh you know as, as, as anyone that's gone through this before just um you know finding venues and uh you know wedding guest lists and all that stuff we're just in the thick of it so yeah and 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 that's another reason that it's probably good that i have a little, yeah, you gotta, you gotta little champagne tonight. Up yeah cheers again. <laughs> that's right D just remember you know eloping is an option and uh, i know i know it, it's always you can kind of go there in your mind the two of you no when, that's right when all the family is getting kind of crazy so. yeah no exactly yeah <laughs> it, it's it, it's been a lot of fun you know we uh have had um just obviously a lot of support everyone's real really supportive and uh just a lot of um a lot of a lot of outpouring of love. So anyway, it's it's been great. It's going to be nuts. It's uh, we both have kind of large families, and uh, you know, and and it's one thing too. I've noticed, like if you get if you get married in your early twenties, I think you know we're we're a little older now. And, uh, my girlfriend and I are both in our you know early to mid thirties, and you know, if you get married in your twenties, most of your friends are still single. Most of them don't have kids you know, stuff like that. But now when you get married, you know, in your later thirties, most of your, most, most invitations we send out are, you know, the equivalent of like 
five people kind of thing. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. One invitation is equal to at least one spouse and in some cases, five kids. You know? so, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. You know, yeah, I know, right? I know. So, so we're just trying to, uh, trying to figure all that out, but it's, uh, man, it's been, it's been a lot of fun and I, I couldn't be more excited. So. All right. Well, we, we, I mean, you know, the, the two of you, you, you didn't waste any time in celebrating. Uh, yeah. You, yeah. you took her, uh, immediately to one of your favorite locations, uh, which is, uh, the, the stadium at Mississippi state. That's right. Where you need to explain this to me <laughs> because I heard about this from our listeners. That's so funny. People dude. were tweeting in about this. You were apparently on the jumbotron. Well, no, it was crazy. You know, of course, you know, it's a big sec game. Mississippi state played Kentucky this past weekend. And so, uh, Nina and I, we were like, let's, let's get out of town. We'll go up there for a football game. It'll be fun. And, um, and, and anyway, we were, we were there and they have this thing where if you take, uh, if you put photos on Instagram and then you tag them with a specific hashtag that they'll actually pick out folks with that hashtag and put them on the jumbotron. And I was like, well, what the heck? You know, oh. we'll just do this, right? <laughs> There's literally 65,000 people like in, in this, you know, gigantic football stadium. Uh, you know, it's really loud. And, and, and you know, it's I, I think it was like towards the end of the fourth quarter or something. And I look up and there we are. <laughs> And it was, I actually had friends that like, you know, said, my son saw you on the, you know, my, my two-year-old son pointed at you on the Jumbotron before <laughs> I even noticed it. You know, it was really, really kind of funny. So we didn't do the whole cliche, like, you know, Kiss get, cam. get engaged on the Jumbotron oh, kind of yeah, thing. We didn't yeah. do that. You know, I wasn't like, uh, it, was it probably that elaborate with well, it? You, hadn't, you didn't think about it. If you thought about it, you know, no, it would have been you don't need a lighthouse. Right. You know, do, it, do it in the Bulldogs, you know, <laughs> exactly. cow patties in the air. And I know. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's no ringing cowbells. It's just great. It's just great. So <laughs> Instead of wedding bells. Instead of wedding bells, bells, it's cowbells. That's right. <laughs> Man, I've been we, to some weddings like that, actually. Yeah, no, I, I, I have too. I yeah. have too. But uh, yeah, man, it was uh, it, it was it was a great time. It's funny, you know, just going to a big environment like that, and uh, and and I don't know, being up on the TV, it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> no, what I love is that you know when you've got a crowd that big, you know, at least there's going to be a few Country Squire radio listeners in. So uh, seeing some people tweet in about yeah, that, that's so funny, man. That yeah, that, that's happy. hilarious. Yeah, it was really great. I I put that picture on like Facebook, I think, and then maybe about. I don't know, 30 minutes later, I had to put a little caption on there that said, uh, they just put this on the Jumbotron. <laughs> so anyway, it <laughs> was, great. uh, it was really great. But yeah, a lot of exciting stuff going on. We'll be getting married in, uh, in late March and, uh, man, I, um, I, I would threaten to try to get her on here at some point, but I don't think, uh, she would go for that. So, uh, anyway, we're, uh, you know, y'all just have to know that she is, uh, She's a, a. That's coming. She's way out of my league. You know, I, I will say this. You know, she may at, at the uh, at Jackson Pipe Nights in the in the past. I've done kind of some uh, some recording, and and you know, some significant others have made their way onto. Yeah, uh, you onto never the know. Broadcast. You so, never know. Sure. Of course, we've actually got coming up uh, this weekend on Saturday the Jackson Pipe Night. Uh, that of course is going to be October twenty eighth. Uh, which is this weekend, this Saturday, long smoke competition happening. That's right, right it's, here. Uh, it's it's about to go down, and I, I got to tell you, man, I am super excited. I, I feel. You know, I was actually uh, talking to Caleb before we we were getting things set up and everything for the show tonight, and uh, he was asking me about Texas. He was like, "Well, you know, how did you do in the long smoke competition?" Yeah, yeah. I told him, you know, it, it wasn't. I, I did, I did okay. You know, I did, I did all right. But it, I, yeah, you, you came what around a little over middle of the pack, right? Yeah, I mean, but it was yeah. so. Yeah, I was in, and it was in the top ten, but it was around like I don't know, twenty eight minutes or something like that. It's probably less. And uh, and you know, I told him that and he was like, "All right, well, that you know, that that's okay." And I was like, "That is, it is exactly okay. <laughs> it, is, it is not beyond that." But, so I feel like I do that's have awesome. some some ground to make up this weekend. But man, I'm looking forward. That's to good. It. Yeah, it's great. You can actually get your tickets uh, if you are in the Central Mississippi area online at thecountrysquireonline.com. They're twenty dollars, and uh, this coming Saturday. Uh, the 28th of October, it'll be at 6 p.m. here at the Country Squire. So uh, good food, good drinks, uh, lots of friends, live music, and, of course, our uh, famous, infamous uh, Slow Smoke competition, which will uh, feature Texas Tea, which is the same uh, same blend that we had at, at the Texas Pipe Show. Yeah, good so, thoughts on Texas Tea, uh, man. Yeah, so far, yeah, the reviews are good. You know, it's been been good. It'll be uh, on our website for purchase, available really soon. and. Um, yeah, we're, we're excited. I think we're going to have a good crowd. Now, for those who are trying to do both of these two events, the, the Jackson Pipe Night and this next one, it's going to be difficult because, of course, the Sunday following uh, here this weekend, it is finally that time, the UK Pipe Show. I know, right? And the War of the Roses. <laughs> now, details I wonder first. what a ticket is from Jackson, Mississippi to... 
anywhere in the UK. It, it'd probably be a little different. I don't think there's range. a direct flight from right. Jackson, Mississippi to the UK. Yeah, you, I don't you, think so. You, there should be. But we, there, yeah, I, I'm sure there's a market <laughs> for that, right? Of course, uh, Can, uh, Canal House, it's going to be starting at 12 o'clock noon uh, in Nottingham. So if you are in the UK area, if you've not already made your plans, uh, this is it. This is the time. And of course, the War of the Roses, you've been hearing yeah. us talk about this. Uh, now, John David, of course, you know, as, as I was thinking about you know how how best to to so, show my support for you. I, I decided to to buy uh, a, a bouquet. In fact, two bouquet, <laughs> bouquets. You our, did, you did. Uh, would you like to but, describe the bouquet of roses well, I, that I got? Yeah, I, I noticed. Uh, I, no, I noticed they're both the same color. They're both they're both white roses. Uh, well, yeah, uh, why, which you know are, are good are good for weddings. I mean, which is good. good uh, for, obviously, anything? we're we're celebrating. Uh, you know, my engagement and all that kind of thing. But but also, they have another context as well. Oh, that's right. Because, yeah. of course, at the uh, at the at the UK Pipe Show, they got the War of the Roses. It's going to be Lancaster versus White Rose. You know, we don't want to choose favorites here. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we don't. I mean, these are great uh, Country Squire tobaccos. That's right. Um, that's right. And, you know, the fact that we're we're talking about it right now with, with bouquets <laughs> of White Rose. In fact, you know what? I'm, I'm going to even I'm going to even the plan for you. Oh, look at that, there Bo. You <laughs> there you go. All right. There is one. There is one. There is one red rose. Red rose. So we, we have two large bouquets of, uh, of of white roses, and and there's one there's one red rose. Yeah. So, there you go. So, man, the Lancasters versus the Yorks uh, this coming weekend here at uh, at the UK Pipe Show. It's so exciting. La, 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 uh, la, 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 Lancashire. We've got, we've got, oh! Lancashire, Lancashire, and uh, Yorkshire, and, and Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Uh, of course, they're going to uh, be smoking White Rose uh, from the Country Squire and Lancaster as well, and having uh, having some fun with that. It was really cool, you know. They actually sent us photos of of how they had taken all the tobaccos and kind of uh, you know weighed them, measured them out, and everything. And they uh, they had put uh, White Rose and and red rose stickers on each bag yeah, to, yeah. to identify them. And so it was just really, uh, it was, it was really neat. Yeah. But we're, we're excited to be a part of that. Can't wait to see, uh, you know, all the photos and, and video coming out of there, man. Yeah. Big, big weekend. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, okay. Hey, one last thing, uh, we've got in terms of kind of uh, events and things that are, are coming up, we've got an upcoming episode this, uh, Halloween, which of course is next week. It is all about sinister pipes, and sinister pipe tobaccos. So when I say that, by the way, if uh, if something comes to mind, if you think, oh, this is a sinister tobacco, oh, this is a sinister pipe, we want to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so send it our way. Yeah, email those in. Show at Country Squire Radio. Uh, let us know what you consider to be a sinister pipe or a sinister pipe tobacco. And sinister, by the way, is not necessarily mean a hamster scale. <laughs> uh, go back for the uh, in a pinch episode if you don't know what I'm referring to by that. But, yeah. Um, point it, it doesn't have to be hamster scale tobacco. Exactly. It's, just, it's just sinister tobacco. It's wh whatever your definition of that is. And then, uh, and then finally, you know, I teased it out last week. We've got some, uh, some details to share with you this year. As we come into the holiday season, we are going to be doing a custom corn cob pipe competition. This is so, this is exciting. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's something that we have been wanting to do <laughs> for, for almost a year now. I know, I know. Definitely over a year now. And actually, and so we're really excited to finally, finally get this thing on underway. Uh, there is a kind of a holiday theme. So, you know, if, uh, if you are, if you want to kind of incorporate a holiday theme into your custom corn cob, uh, here's the way it's going to work. You will need to get yourself a Missouri Meerschaum pipe. Does not matter which particular style. Yeah, you're any, any kind of Missouri Meerschaum pipe. All right? over yeah. the board, whichever one you want. But there is one entry per person. Uh, the pipe itself has to be smokable. So it, whatever, whenever you're done doing whatever you are going to do to it, it still has to be smokable. And extra props for those that you know maintain kind of a holiday type of theme with the uh, yeah. with, with their design as yeah. well. Yeah. And so here's here's how it's going to work. You guys send those into the shop. Uh, we will actually be doing some judging to choose who is going to be the winner. The winner of the custom corn cob competition is going to get a custom corn cob trophy. That's right. As well as a goodie bag containing, uh, you know, uh, some some custom uh, various and sundry fun items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. It really is gonna be great. For all the entries, though, we're planning on doing kind of an auction for all the the pipes that are turned in to donate to charity. Uh, stay tuned uh, next week for more information on that. So as we build up to it, we'll have more and more information about it. But go ahead, get your Missouri Meerschaum pipe. Start doing your custom job to it. And uh, yeah, I cannot wait to see what uh, some of the listeners it's, come up. It's with. exciting. There's so many great shapes for Missouri Meerschaum. And, and and finishes and everything else, but you'll be able to find uh, you know the pipe that fits you best and kind of figure out ways to customize it that uh, that you think will stand out. And of course, uh, in the end, all this you know we're having fun with it, but it also will go for a good cause, and we're excited about that too. So um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I can, I just can't wait to get these uh, you know pipe contraption design. 
uh, creations in. I, I I think they're really going to be going to be nuts and awesome. So it's um, going to be a blast. Yeah, man. it'll be great. It'll be great. All right. Well, hey, we got some brand new members uh, joining up with the Country Squire Radio International Pipe Club. Yeah, dude. Uh, shout awesome. out to uh, joining us now at the Squire level. We've got oil field pipe guy oil field pipe guy of the oil field pipe guys out in uh in uh, kentucky uh <laughs> you know the famous oil field pipe guys the, are, the, are there are there oil fields in kentucky no no i, Is I that think a thing? i think they're all writers if i'm not mistaken but uh um, oh, okay. yeah yeah something something like that <laughs> uh so welcome welcome to the uh, club we also have a uh, pilgrim joining our joseph baid yeah man joseph boyd <laughs> joseph, oh boyd that makes that's right sense. that's that right uh man P joining at the uh, pilgrim level joseph thank you so much brother we appreciate you and shout out also to uh to new patrons as well by uh byron fist as well as steven schmidt y'all are awesome yeah now of course yep. this week or this month rather we've been kind of announcing that near here at the tail end we're planning on doing a big giveaway uh, of various items to various club members that'll be drawn at random uh you want us to run it down real quick what we got the, for the for yeah the it's exciting so in you still have a week to enter this and, right. and to enter you've got uh yeah all you have to do is join, join at, uh, at patreon.com slash country squire radio you can join at the squire level or the pilgrim level um and and we've got uh four four giveaway items here so far we've got uh a tin of penzance the tin has been opened actually it's only got one bowl missing from it uh but but a tin of penzance <laughs> uh we have a tin of pembroke uh also from uh, the folks at Esoterica. We've got a two ounce bag of Country Squire Hunting Creek. Uh, and then we also have a uh, delicious can of uh, corn cob oh! pipe from our friends at Cornell Deal. So, uh, man, just, just some, time for the holiday. I know, right? And, uh, and, and very appropriate. So, uh, man, we're excited about all these things. And, uh, you know, any of our club members are, are eligible to win those. And, uh, man, those will be drawn next weekend or, or next, next show, next week. Man, I'm excited. I'm so excited. You could say, I love it. Which is appropriate because <laughs> that's so lame. <laughs> Tonight's show is all about the love it. No, 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 no. The Levat pipe. Actually, I should probably even start off by asking the question: Is it love it or is it Levat? It's both. It's is all. It? It's all the above. Yes. <laughs> Dyslexics everywhere rejoice. That's right. That's right. Man, we are talking about the Levat pipe, uh, and and you know it, it's interesting. A, a lot of folks do say love it. Uh, it, it, this is named. Uh, this this pipe is named after uh, Lord Lovett, who uh, it's, it is is a it's a it's a member of the aristocracy in Scotland. Is Lord this, Lovett. Is this, uh, you know, Earl of Lovett or Baron of Lovett? I, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but <laughs> you know, but the, the most, the most, the, the most famous one was was uh, back during World War II, and it was a, a guy that was, uh, you know, influential in some of the British military. Uh, you know, he was just a, a, I think, a commando in that in that era. And, uh, and and he smoked this shaped pipe, and so of course they named the the pipe style after him. But it's uh, it, it, he was Lord Lovett, and and this is the Lovett pipe. You know, back in my single days, they uh, they used to call me Baron Lovett. Yeah, they did. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they, <laughs> They they did they called you Baron Love it they sure did that's right <laughs> um, that's right all right so so he was uh, he was actually a lord yeah yeah he was in uh in in the British aristocracy from Scotland and uh and and somehow you know along the way we developed this pipe shape that uh was probably around pre him but what was made maybe famous or uh, popular because of him kind of like the Prince yeah yeah exactly Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 which was made uh, obviously by the artist formerly known as Prince but, <laughs> right, right. right um yeah so we we've got uh you know just a wonderful a wonderful pipe uh new pipe smokers you know um if you're listening we have so many new pipe smokers that tune into these pipe shape episodes right uh you know why do we kind of uh you know take so much time defining these different pipe shapes right and so and and new pipe smokers they get confused sometimes because the names uh you know tend to at some point not really have a lot to do with the with the type of pipe you know you've got uh, billiard pipes that are named apparently after uh you know a, a pool game <laughs> or you've got you know you've got a bulldog pipe which is named after a a pet but you know has no uh, you know, connection to the the dog itself, or you know, it just on and on. There's all these uh, di different things that we've come to associate with different pipes. And you know, what I love is uh, we, we love these pipe shape shows because we get to talk about the specifics of each different kind of pipe. Uh, the love it is a is is a is a fun shape, and it's one that you know a lot of folks uh, might overlook if they're not really. Uh, familiar with it so and you know it, it is fun to be able to name some of these pipes and to be able to kind of call them uh you know by their uh you know their uh you know taxonomy or what it's almost like their we're proper name yeah it, it's their, almost their like we're name. It, they, right they're baptized name that's right, right. yeah <laughs> it's almost yeah it's almost like we're classifying new uh you know new types of uh 
you know, it discovered insects or something. You know what I mean? Can I see the one that uh, yeah, you brought up? Yeah, this is a Stanwell. Uh, it's a Stanwell uh, black diamond. And we've actually talked about this uh, this particular line of Stanwells before uh, in related to a dress pipe I was series that we did. I was going to ask about yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, just a beautiful pipe, a little Stanwell. Uh, it's, uh, I, I forget the shape it's written on there, but anyway, it's a, it's a, you know, just a really kind of compact, nice, lo love it dress pipe and, uh, and just, just a really elegant pipe. So, so, I mean, so I guess the, my, my immediate question is, and this is coming specifically from the example that you have here. Yeah. Does, does love it imply that it would also be a dress pipe or is this just happen to be, the just happens cell? to be one. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. They come in all different, you know, varieties, just like, uh, you could imagine, uh, you know, uh, sand blasted smooth, all different types of finishes, uh, really. And actually the pony express from our friends, uh, at Missouri Mirror is uh, is close to a love it as well which we can talk about later all right so so another question too is that you know when we when we talk about pipe shapes pipe styles you know it seems like a lot of times it has to do with just the bowl sometimes it's the bowl on the shank sometimes yeah. the stem is even at play when we're talking about the shape the uh the the, the shape know, the shape pipe. yeah yeah uh with the Le with the levette or love it <laughs> <laughs> uh with with the with the love it is it the bowl? Is it the shape? Like, at, at what um, what encompasses the love it versus what's not encompassed as it being a? a Gosh, it's a, that's the question, right? Like, what <laughs> makes this a love it and not a billiard, or right. what makes this a love it but not a uh, not a short Canadian or something like that? It's always uh, always something. This this pipe is uh, almost as if a a Canadian uh, style pipe and a billiard pipe, uh, a, a straight billiard pipe had like a like a love child, and they called it the love it. And 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 I think there's something there. That, See, that's the origin story. I think that I think that's it. I, th I think that's it. It has nothing to do with Scotland or in any British aristocracy. Or the lords just, thereof. Yeah. No, it's just it's a Canadian and a and a uh, and a billiard. Uh, they 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 loved it, and 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 we got the the love it. And we got the love it. <laughs> um, yeah. So th again, uh, you know, you've got um, a kind of a billiard shape uh, bowl. So it's just going to be a nice cylindrical bowl. Uh, generally straight up and down. It might have a little cant forward occasionally, but generally straight up and down. Um, the shank on a love it is going to be uh, at least 1.5 to two times uh, the length of the height of the bowl. So you've got, uh, you know, like uh, the you turn the if the bowl is an inch tall, then the shank is going to be at least an inch and a half long, okay. kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. that that's kind of the the rule of thumb. That there's that they're always these pipes are always uh, kind of marked by having a longer shank than they do the stem. So the, interesting. Yeah, okay, the, yeah, the yeah. stem. Uh, think about a, a Canadian pipe. They have really long shanks, and then and then short stems. Almost uh, like just the just for your lip to get around. Exactly. Exactly. It, yeah. uh, the lumberman is the same way. Liverpool's are the same way. And of course, we have. Uh, we have love it as well. So, um, and and then of course the difference here that between uh, this and a Canadian, of course, uh, the Lovets have a uh, a round uh, shank, whereas the Canadian's going to have an oval shank. Um, and then it also has a tapered stem as opposed, or I'm sorry, a saddle stem as opposed to a tapered stem. So, um, you know, it, it, it's funny we have all these, uh, um, you know, descriptions of pipes, and if it, we talk about this stuff, because if we don't talk about it, and you know, if there aren't these classifications of it, folks are going to kind of make up their own, you know, uh, fo folks tend to, you know, come in and, uh, you know, if I didn't have a description for this pipe, you know, non pipe smokers might think, why are you getting so specific about all these different things? Sure, but, yeah, yeah. You know, but if, if I didn't have a subscription, you know, a description of this pipe, you know, uh, someone might come in and they, they would, they make up their own nomenclature for it. You know, we've got folks that come in. I've heard, uh, I've heard billiard pipes called, uh, tube pipes. Um, Wait, I, I've, what? I, yeah, I've heard, uh, of course, bent pipes are often referred to as uh, crook pipes. I hear that a lot. Uh, we, we, I've heard pokers referred to as the gavel pipe. Um, you know, uh, that uh, one I can see. I, I think my favorite, uh, my, well, one is, uh, of course, the bulldog pipe is that pipe with the lines, you know, and, <laughs> right, right, and then, yeah. uh, and my favorite, I think is the, when people refer to the horn, uh, pipe, a lot of times they'll refer to it, or I've heard this before, uh, they'll call it the cornucopia pipe, oh, you know, and, yeah. and, and, but it, it's just interesting, you know, that we, you know, th this is why we talk about the specifics of shapes and, uh, and and proportions and design and all that. Uh, it's just so we can kind of give some um, some standard terms to to these things, so that you know we can all be on the same page about what we're talking about here. And so uh, so anyway, that's kind of the idea on a on a love it pipe. You've got the um, you know the the shank is generally one and a half times the the length of the height of the bowl. Um, 
at, at, at a minimum. Uh, and then, of course, you've got a smaller uh, stem, and, and, and then it's going to be a saddle stem on a Lovett. So just a really classy look. Uh, th this particular one I'm holding is a, a very compact pipe, so it's, it's one that uh, would be a good pocket pipe. Yeah, but, yeah, but I mean, they're not always like that. No, and that, that is true. I mean, I remember that one in particular when we talked about dress pipes and how you, yeah, know, you could yeah. just tuck this away in your tuxedo uh, pretty pretty, pretty easily. Um, can, so when you've got kind of a shorter stem versus a longer shank like that, it, it what impact does that actually have for the smoking of the pipe? And I think that that's a good question. I think a lot of folks, you know, it, again, they like to classify these pipes so specifically because these things are important to them. So um, a, a lot of folks think that you know, the more briar involved in the pipe and less amount of stem, uh, the cooler the smoke. And so, you know, for me, I've never really experienced that. But a lot of folks think, well, you know, the less stem is involved and more briar, therefore it will probably breathe easier. Um, and so, you know, they they like that. And that is a reason that the, um, you know, if the shank is longer than the stem, then that's a preferable thing for a lot of people. Um, also, you know, with the love it like this, the, the stem is a very small uh, amount of, uh, you know, proportion of the pipe itself. And so you mentioned it earlier, it's, it's almost like just, just enough to get your teeth around kind mm -hmm, of thing. You know, mm -hmm, it's one of those mm -hmm. things that, uh, it, it's just there. It, it, basically if a, if a love it smoker could have an all briar pipe, they probably would, you oh, know really? what I mean? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but they, you know, just had to have enough there to put a, put a nice stem on it. Um, and, <laughs> you and can't bite in that glorious wood. <laughs> I know. Right. I know there are all briar pipes, but you know, they're just not, not going to have the durability and, uh, obviously are going to show marks differently than, uh, than something with a, you know, with the acrylic or vulcanite stem. So, um, you know, and, and then also on a, on a love it like this, the, the saddle stem offers an opportunity for your teeth to, uh, just have a really narrow, uh, bite rather than a taper stem, which might, uh, you know, leave some thickness and may, may be a little harder to clinch, uh, you know, at that level. So, um, a, a lot of folks too, you know, they, they're going to enjoy a love it pipe, uh, because of the round shank. Uh, you know, on a on a Canadian style pipe, the the shank, uh, you know, is more oval shaped, um, and and for some people that's a good hand feel. It's it comes down to kind of how it how it feels in your hand. Is it something that uh, allows you to grip it easier? Um, so many of these little tiny nuances in pipes. You know, how tall is the bowl? What shape is the shank? Is the stem tapered or or saddle? Um, you know, is the stem uh, long or short compared to the shank? And all these different things like that. Those are the things I think that. Um, you know, really heavy and regular pipe smokers um, are, are going to find pretty strong preferences on before too long. You know what I mean? Uh, for me, for instance, of course, I, you know, if you're a longtime listener of the show, uh, you know, I love a Bing's favorite and I, I've, I've smoked my Bing's favorite all the time. I'm smoking it tonight, as a matter of fact, with some uh, with some Frogmorton. Um, but, you know, th there's something about the long stem to shank ratio here and then just the longer overall ratio with smaller bowl. Uh, that does it for me. It holds it, you know, farther away from my face and the bowl is small. Uh, so I don't have to sit there and smoke, you know, for an hour and a half. Right, and, right, right. Uh, it's also a very light pipe. And, um, you know, I, I'm kind of abusive to some of my pipes and the stem <laughs> can take a lot of abuse, whereas sometimes the briar can't. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I like the longer stem, you know, um, with the love it, you know, you you have to keep all those same things in mind, you know, and I think everyone's got their own uh, preferences, but that's why, um, you know, that that's why, you know, they make pipes of all different various sizes and shapes. And, and so you mentioned that, of course, the Love It has a rounder uh, shank to it, whereas yeah. the uh, Canadians have kind of the oval style. What about, uh, uh, what, what's when it's got a square? <laughs> uh, <laughs> With a square shank? Yeah, well, you know, if it's, of course, it's a, if it's a bulldog, then a bulldogs will have the square shank, but then uh, other square I shanks. I consider bulldogs diamond. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it is like a diamond shank, right? A square, a square, I guess, turned, you know, 45 degrees is a diamond. But you know but, what I'm talking <laughs> about, right? There, there's those long shanked pipes that are yeah. like square I, flat. And yeah, I mean, there. I think you would just call that a square shank pipe. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair <laughs> or, enough, fair you enough. know, a lot of times you'll see that too, uh, also on a on what we called uh, paneled pipes. Uh, paneled pipes, though, don't really refer to the, um, to the, to the shank. They refer more to the bowl. Okay. You know, so for instance, I've got a, a, a pipe I've smoked on the air before, a, a really large Castleford pipe uh, that has a giant, uh, Dublin shaped bowl and it has a paneled, uh, paneled, you know, shank on there. Gotcha. Um, and, okay, and so, yeah, yeah. and so that's a paneled, you know, that's a, that's a square shank pipe, but it's still a, it's still a Dublin pipe, you know, so a paneled pipe would actually have a paneled bowl, uh, on there. And again, we talk about all these specifics because it really does help the heaviest pipe smokers, um, identify pipes that, that they're really after, you know, like if, if we didn't have the name love it for this shape, right. 
then you know you would have to say something like this i want a canadian pipe that is that has a uh, a round shank and a saddle stem you'd have to say that Right. Rather than I want, I love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, it's, it's so, like specifying all the de- various uh, pumps of caramel and, and splashes of this. And I want 12 that's different shots of espresso. And just instead of just saying, a, I want a caramel macchiato. That's right. Know? That's right. And, you know, for a lot of folks, it's not just a look thing. Like we said, it's a, it, sometimes it, it is a, um, a, a functionality thing. You know, how does the briar feel in your hand as opposed to the, you know, the acrylic or the ebonite, you know, is there uh, more, you know, benefit for you for having a shorter stem because maybe you hold your pipe a certain way mm-hmm. and things like this. And, uh, and, and, and then for some people, they just like the look of it. You know, I love it is, uh, is just a very kind of elegant pipe. It's very uh, classic. It does evoke that billiard kind of 1950s, uh, you know, boardroom style pipe, but uh, you know, but the, the stem allows it, uh, you know, just uh, to, you know, be a little, a little different, just a little offset. So I like um, boardroom style pipe. I like, that's yeah. a, that's a good, that's a good descriptor right there. Yeah. I yeah. Know. You know, I, that's what I get from, I, I kind of refer to those pipes as those, you know, 1950s, 1960s classic pipes. You know, you go through these uh, old estate pipe collections from the mid 20th century and, and it's almost nothing but straight pipes. You yeah. know, they're just straight chunky looking billiards and pots and uh you know canadians and lavats and you know just all these different shapes that uh that just make it fun you know i, I don't know you, you we, we've kind of experienced we've talked about it before you know around the 80s and 90s uh you know as pipe smoking changed and the culture changed uh you know now we've we see a lot more bent pipes than we used to but just those uh you know those old 1950s uh congressman boardroom style pipes you know it's just something that you think of uh you know harry truman smoking it's uh it's one of those so, yeah no, um, like, scotsman scotsman gets scotsman in here nah, that's right all right now see see there's the problem is right now we're not getting our sales up we've got these newspapers out here and nobody's telling any kind of stories that anybody wants to buy now scott <laughs> you're in charge of this you go out and you find me a story now pass me my levitt that, right <laughs> my, my, pass my levitt my levitt scott <laughs> get it to me <laughs> scotsman because you know levitt yeah it's a scottish lord no that's right that's or was right. it irish no it was scottish it was scottish it's yeah. the same thing it's, it's got it's, it's definitely it's not yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it man uh, just a beautiful a beautiful shape a really elegant pipe and uh one that uh you know is very versatile to uh you know a lot of folks that are really into grain uh that that love you know buy pipes a lot for the grain uh and the ability to see uh, you know, see the beauty of the briar itself. Uh, they love Lovitz. They love Canadians and, and Liverpools and lum- and Lumbermans. Uh, these are shapes that require a really long bowl, you know, or, or a really long block of briar rather, you know, it's, it takes a, takes a chunky piece of briar to make a pipe uh, in this shape, particularly the longer ones, you know. Um, and, and so you get to really see, um, you know, some of that, some of that straight and flame grain show out. Uh, and, and, and I think some of the most elegant and, impressive bird's eyes come come through on some of these pipes as well so um anyway just uh just a beautiful shape real classic and uh and versatile and uh and you need one in your collection love it man yeah absolutely love it yep well hey uh <laughs> you know i was just kind of curious in in terms of the uh, the various catalog of, of pipes especially the corn cob let's say missouri meerschaum that's probably, right that's right uh is there a particular like love it similar shape that comes to mind for you yeah man it, it sure does that actually is the um and and I was just uh, just thinking about this uh, as we were doing our show, but uh, it's actually the Pony Express, the Pony, the Pony Express, the Pony That's Express right, yeah. uh, pipe from Missouri Meerschaum. It's a great little pipe. It's one of their smaller frame pipes. Uh, it has a uh, just kind of a small cylindrical bowl that uh, billiard style bowl uh, that you you know would think of in the Missouri Meerschaum, uh, you know, Legend or uh, any of the other ones. And it's got a just kind of a nice uh, small frame. Um, a round shank and then and then a nice uh, Levat style saddle stem there on the very end. So uh, it's available in the in the amber and also the uh, the black uh, the black stem and so uh, real versatile. Yeah. Uh, be a good one maybe perhaps to uh, to to customize for the uh, for our our, our our custom our uh, custom you know, cob competition. custom cob competition. Yeah, yeah. and uh, but just a great pipe. It's uh it's it's kind of a kind of a akin probably to um you know the uh, Tom Sawyer pipe or, uh, you know, even the Missouri Meerschaum shortstop, one of those, it's in that kind of smaller frame. Kind of same family. Uh, yeah, same family, but, uh, just a great pipe. It's a good taster pipe. One of those that, uh, you know, you're not 
necessarily going to expect to load up and sit there and smoke for an hour, but uh, you know, just enjoy, uh, just enjoy a few minutes of some of your favorite tobacco. And hey, if you love your Pony Express, take a picture smoking it this week. Tweet that into us. We love to retweet those out. It's a great way to let the good folks at Missouri Meerschaum know you appreciate them for sponsoring this show. Yes, sir. All right, man. Well, I was about to do quick fire questions. That's, that's <laughs> a, almost swinging a miss. <clears throat> All right, pipe question of the week comes in to us from listener Dustin B. All right, now this is a great question from Dustin. He asks, uh, he says he was listening to our casing versus topping uh, a discussion a while back uh, and the talk of tobacco snobs. Now, we, we have mentioned yeah. tobacco yeah. snobs in the past. Yeah. Uh, uh, he says, I tend to think of tin tobacco as of higher quality uh, than, say, bulk tobacco, but is it? If so, should I only smoke bulk tobacco in lower quality pipes? Says he's laughing very loud so parts of his body are falling off. And again, that is from <laughs> Dustin B. That's great. Uh, good, good way to put that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> man, you know, good question. A lot of folks, um, you know, they'll come in a shop like ours and uh, they'll either head straight for the tin section and ignore the bulks or they'll uh, they'll come straight for our house blend section and ignore the tins, you know. And and, and so you've got this uh, kind of split. You've got folks that think, well, you know, uh, obviously, if they're going to spend this much time uh, packaging the tin tobacco and uh, labeling it and this kind of thing, it's going to be uh, of higher quality uh, than the other. But then you also have folks that, you know, are going to say, man, the you know, the tobaccos that I get hand weighed and hand blended here at the shop are going to, you know, they're fresher. They always have more moisture and, and, uh, you know, tend to be, um, you know, just fresher than, than the other tobaccos. And so, um, you know, on average, you know, your average tin tobacco might be a little higher quality than your average bulk tobacco. Um, it really depends on your, uh, the shop you're choosing to, to shop with. <laughs> uh, so, you know, here at the country squire, we use only premium, uh, tobacco ingredients when we make our uh, make our blends, um, and and a lot of your best tobacconists across the nation are going to do something similar to that. So uh, you know if you are in a in a shop that doesn't have a lot of bulk pipe tobacco, uh, where they're you know using this stuff regularly, blending with it regularly, uh, experimenting with it regularly. A lot of you know a lot of our favorite cigar shops, for instance, have a little you know they might have a couple of couple of jars of tobacco back there. Uh, typically, you know, Lane One Q, BCA. Uh, these are great, great tobaccos. You know, really good tobaccos. But um, you know, it's just is is that what you want compared to something like a Orlick Golden Sliced or a uh, you know McClellan Tin or uh, something from our friends at Cornell and Deal or uh, you know whatever. They're they're um, all over the map. But it, it is a personal preference thing. I don't think though, if you're buying from a reputable source. Uh, that the tobacco you'll get from behind the counter is of lesser quality. Uh, I, re I really don't. Yeah, I think it's something that, uh, you know, you, if, if you're buying from a legitimate source, uh, a tobacconist that's well-known and trusted, uh, you know, that the tobacco from behind the counter is going to be uh, of equal quality of, uh, of the tobacco that you'll find in the, in the tins, if not, uh, if not better, you know, frankly, if not better. Uh, so a, a lot of the tins, you know, these, these are tobaccos that are expected to be sitting on shelves for a really long amount of mm -hmm. time. Um, and so, you know, you gotta, gotta remember that, you know, certain things have to, uh, happen to tobaccos in order for that to take place. But, um, you know, uh, with, with, with bulk tobacco, especially at a shop like the Squire, where we move stuff so quickly, um, you know, it's always going to be fresh. It's something that, uh, you know, we make sure we put our hands on every leaf of it, literally, uh, before it goes into your bag. And so, um, you know, it just gives us the opportunity to make sure that the quality controls there and, uh, the blend is consistent and, and all that. So, um, anyway, uh, you know, I, I, and I certainly don't think, I, I definitely don't think that, uh, you know, if you are buying bulk tobaccos or, privately blended tobaccos, um, you know, from a, from a tobacconist that, uh, that you'll need to smoke those in lower quality pipes. Uh, you know, we, um, you know, definitely, you know, you would, you would, uh, you know, segregate your pipes, uh, more along the lines of aromatic English blend, Virginia's whatever. Uh, and, and you would treat the, uh, you know, private, uh, stock tobaccos the same way you would tend tobaccos. So, um, anyway, just my two cents. Yeah. And uh, as yeah. always smoke what you like. That's it. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. We always tell folks that, you know, I, gosh, we, you know, we pick on the pipe snobs and I, there's a place for pipe snobs. And, yeah. But and sometimes it, you'll find them right here behind. And, the and sometimes <laughs> they're behind the mic. Right. Yeah. But right. but the, but then we've got, you know, as, as evidenced by our uh, use of the hamster scale. But then but then you've got <laughs> but the, but then you've got, you know, you've got, you know, the times when we, you know, really, uh, you know, in, in, encourage people to just, you know, smoke what they 
uh, like and enjoy. Sometimes it is better to be a little picky. It, it, all that depends on you. You know, we, these are our own experiences and, uh, and, you know, we, we stand by them, but, you know, the fun of the pipe is not getting caught up necessarily in the, uh, you know, the specifics of the do's and don'ts. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, what works for you and, and how do you enjoy it and how it lets you, re you relax. So, That's right. Um, That's yeah. Good. Anyway, try them all, try them all. But, but I don't think if you're buying bulk tobacco from a, from a reputable source that it is lower quality tobacco. And Hey, that's a great pipe question of the week again from Dustin B. If you've got a pipe question of the week, send it in show at country squire radio.com. All right, quick five questions. Ow! All right, man. We got some great quick five questions in over from the forums over at thispipelife.com. Thispipelife.com. More about them in just a minute. <laughs> All right, here we go. So these are actually coming in from Ghost of Pompeii, a, uh, okay. a frequent uh, user over there at uh, yeah, thispipelife.com. Yeah, that's right. And we've heard from him before. Right? And, and he got us. This is great. So we're getting close to Halloween. In fact, this episode, next episode, we're kind of uh, uh, get, getting close to it here. And so he gave us uh, some quick fire questions that will bring us all the way through to Halloween. Uh, these are all horror themed. Okay. Horror. Horror themed. Horror. Theme. Horror. 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 It's, it's, <laughs> it's only difficult when you think about it. No, it, no you're right. You're right. We, it, we don't have any horror themed questions here. No, no horror. Just horror themed okay, questions. Yes, right. right. <laughs> that is exactly right. All right. So here we go. Good horror movie or horror movie so bad that it's good? Oh, definitely the bad ones. Definitely the bad ones. No, that that like I mean, it, 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 horror horror movies that are actually decent have their place, but for me, you watch those movies to laugh. That that's that's <laughs> that's why you watch. Them. Yeah. That's right. I, I want to see the ketchup blood and just you know it, silly, uh, you know poorly poor acting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You ever seen Young Frankenstein? I have not. Now that, that that is actually more of a comedy movie, like a comedy parody of horror movies. Right. And it is fantastic. <laughs> I have seen the movie several times. I've also watched the actual stage play as well. It is uh it's it's brilliant. But um, <laughs> yeah, definitely movies, horror movies that are so bad that they are good. Okay, stop motion animation or CGI? Uh you know, I'll go with CGI. Really? Yeah, I go with CGI. I, okay. I, I just enjoy it better, I think. Yep. Yeah. I mean, like, if you're talking in general, sure. I mean, CGI yeah. has really come a long way. But if I'm thinking, like, horror movies, you know, like, I, you know, I, I think about, um, oh, what oh was... now I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It, it, If we're talking about horror movies, yeah, yeah, the stop motion. There is something yeah. about, like, the creepy way that stop motion looks. Yeah, I agree. Uh, what was that movie, uh, J Jason of the Argonauts or whatever? I don't know. You, you don't ever had to watch that in school. Mm -mm. All right, fair enough. <laughs> I just remember in school having to watch this, and like it's it's this guy, and he's fighting off these skeletons, but they're like stop motion skeletons, and it's like a real actor who's fighting them. That's crazy. And it, it looked like it was really impressive for the time. Plus, it also just like had creepy feel to it with the way that they were moving around. There was an eerie nature to it. So <laughs> stop motion all the way. Uh, modern Asian horror films, like for example, The Ring or The Grudge, or Japanese Godzilla movies. So monster movies versus kind of the the psychological uh, uh, thrillers of, of hmm. say modern uh, Asian horror. Yeah, I get, well, I guess I'll go with uh, like the Godzilla movies. Yeah, I, that, for me that kind of plays into the like you know they're so bad, so they're bad good that kind it's of good. Thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I, I think that's where I land on that. I'm exactly the same way. I, I do remember seeing the American remake of the of the Ring. Uh, when it came out and I, I remember it did creep me out. I had to call somebody like yeah. seven days later, like, Hey, just stay on the phone with me. Cause yeah. <laughs> this time last week I watched the movie, but, um, but no, yeah, I'm, I'm all about the monster movies. Yep. And then finally sequels or prequels again, thinking about kind of in a horror mindset. Sequels. Definitely sequels. Yeah. Sequels. I, I think they have to get more and more lame as it goes out. You know, once you get to like, you know, Leprechaun 14, <laughs> you know, I, what, what is it called? Like, you know, back, back to the hood or something. Revenge like, of I, the Dublin. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I just, you know, I, I don't know. It, it gets more and more ridiculous as it goes on. So yeah, I, I don't know. This is a, this is a good time of year for silly movies. Well, on top of that, like prequels, when it comes to horror films, like you already know what's going to happen at the end of it. Cause some yeah. people are not going to be there in the next movie and the bad guy clearly <laughs> is. So right. there's that. Plus there's this whole right. mindset of like, you know, Go back to the OG prequel, right? Go back to uh, to Phantom Menace. You know, you had you had Darth Vader, which was this amazing, yeah, you know, uh, Hollywood villain. And then, like, you go all the way back to the prequels, like, well, here he is, his little boy. Well, look, that's not fun. He's, he's not the fun. Villain. And don't get me wrong, I, there's a lot to love about the prequels. I'm not hating. I'm just saying that you know it does kind of take away from that, you know, immediate uh, uh, wickedness. Yeah, like, wickedness. Yeah. Iconic nature to the right. villain and everything when you right. kind of show their origin stories. So. 
let it be a mystery to some extent. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. All right. Well, these were great uh, quick fire questions. Again, those from Ghost of Pompeii, uh, who, of course, is a frequent member over at thispipelife.com. That's right. Now, thispipelife.com is an amazing online community that if you have not signed up for, I don't know why not. I mean, clearly, this must be your first time, in which case, this is going to be a really confusing episode to be your first time, honestly. <laughs> but hey, head over to thispipelife.com. It's absolutely free to sign up. When you use the code CSR, it lets them know you heard about it on the show, but you get access to their great forums. They've got some amazing interviews over there, some of their fire, fireside chats and, and, and discussions. It's they've a got great going resource on. for new and experienced pipe smokers. Absolutely. A very visual experience as well. You can connect with them on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, all this pipe life, all across the board there. Uh, again, not to be confused with this pipe wife.com which is not where i met my future wife well there's we will not confirm nor deny <laughs> how that happened but That's um, right. but hey maybe you can meet your future wife at this pipe life Dot com. You could. You might. <laughs> Man, wait, that's what we need or this pipelife.com romance that's, story. That's what we need. That's what we know there's got to be some. If if you met there's your significant other. There's got to be some. If you if you met your significant other or went on one date due to this pipelife.com. Right into the show. We want to know about. We want to know about. It. <laughs> And uh, it's bound to have happened, especially if you use the code CSR when you both signed up. That's right. At this pipeline. <laughs> All right, man, listen to feedback. We got an email in from listener Dave. What did Dave have to say? I mean, he said a while back, I either saw or listened to an episode in which John David was explaining some different ways that you could broaden your palate. Uh, my tastes tend towards English blends, and one of the suggestions was to get out of your comfort zone. So for the couple of weeks, I have only smoked uh, a Virginia Perique. Uh, a couple of nights ago, I was out with a friend and was offered a tobacco I hadn't tried before. I'm glad to say that the technique worked. Uh, before, it could, I could only detect minor differences between blends. Uh, for example, all English blends taste the same. Um, and he said, I was uh, able to pick out both the Virginia and the Burley in the tobacco that night and just a hint of the Latakia in the blend. Uh, many thanks and proud supporter of the show. Uh, keep up the great work, Dave Allen. D D Dave, thank you so much, man. Mm -hmm. That That is a great example of stretching your palate, right? So this is someone that, uh, you know, has uh, been an English blend smoker. Uh, you know, maybe he loves English blends, but uh, couldn't really figure it out exactly why he liked them or, uh, you know, or, or what to, you know, w w how to pick out nuances in the tobaccos that he's smoking, how to describe them and things like that. And so he shocks his palate by going out and getting a vapor, right? <laughs> and, and and so you go get a Virginia Perique, you're smoking this Virginia Perique, and then and it, it, it shocks you. And then when you get back into the English blend or something more familiar, all of a sudden you're, you have this new vocabulary, you have this new uh, way of describing and comparing and looking at it. So uh, it really does help to, you know, again, step out of your comfort zone, stretch, stretch your, uh, you know, stretch your palate, you know, try to figure out things that you haven't tried. Uh, and as you try those things, even if you don't like them, uh, it'll help you, uh, you know, discern more uh, nuanced, subtle flavors in the tobaccos that you do love. Yeah. Yep. That's beautiful. I, ah, I, I kind of feel like there's a little, little romance. In I the think I'll have some champagne. So. <laughs> some champagne. That is some champagne worthy uh, feedback right there. Thanks. Thanks again, Dave, for, uh, for sending that in. We also have an iTunes review in that comes from Makers B. Uh, he says, informative and great entertainment. John David, what else did Makers B have to say? Uh, he says, so happy to have such a wonderful down-to-earth duo to both walk the listener through everything from Pipe Smoking Principles 101 to the inter intricacy of John David's incredible palate <laughs> to help pair uh, to helping pair brown water and pipe tobacco, uh, all while keeping the listener entertained and attentive. Uh, thanks so much for Bo having... Uh, a face for radio <laughs> and the ambition to pursue it and drag along his pipe smoking buddy to give it all such a wonderful podcast. Uh, keep it up guys, man. That's really kind. Thanks. That's awesome. Thanks buddy. so much. Uh, yeah. Bo, Bo, um, but Bo, Bo your, your face isn't just for it. You know, no, I mean, I mean, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's not, it's not, it, it is, but it's not, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all right. It's all right. You'd make a good, like, you know, paper bag face. <laughs> <laughs> says, 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 says the guy that would make a good one with you. No, no, no. Did you, uh, this, this is, uh, did you ever see that whole thing where, um, what's that actor guy that nobody likes? Not James Franco, because everybody loves James Franco, <laughs> except for me. I hate James Franco. That's a whole other thing. No, um, um, he was in the Transformers films. He was like a Disney kid. You're uh, asking me movie questions? I know, I, I know. have no idea. All right, so this kid, he, he did this whole 
quote unquote art exhibit, yeah. which was just him sitting in a room with a bag over his head. Yeah. And people could come in and take like five minutes just to sit in the room with him and he's sitting there with a the bag over his head. So you don't know if it's actually him or Weird. not. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he was wearing a sign that said not famous anymore. Like it was clearly this dude was going through some mental issues. Right. But right. it was him. Like one dude even like took a camera into it and took the bag off. Like, oh snap, it is actually it's you. actually him. And yeah. he's just sitting there just staring at you. <laughs> Twitter's going to correct me on this. It's so weird. It has nothing to do with anything, but it did sure my name. <laughs> What's that guy's name? It doesn't matter. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, so thank you all so much for that feedback, guys. Uh, head over to iTunes. We especially love getting those reviews in. It's a great way to help out support the show. By the way, if you'd love to help support the show in, in more ways than just words, uh, join the club at countrysquireradio.com. There's a big banner right there that says join the club. Uh, by becoming a squire or a pilgrim member, not only are you getting yourself a little bit of digital swag, you also get an opportunity to win some real life goods yeah if you do it in, within the next week right exactly yeah, we're gonna draw for this stuff uh, uh this this next coming week so. exactly and even those of you who are just supporting as patrons just giving a buck an episode i can't tell you how much we appreciate it, means it so a lot yeah thank you all so much for doing that uh we also want to encourage you to tune in live on a weekly that's right because we are back on a weekly uh monday nights that's 8 30 p.m central 6 30 pacific 9 30 eastern uh where we do broadcast the show at countrysquarerradio.com you can also keep up with us throughout the week i'm at the real Bo york on twitter i'm at john david cole or you can get us at the shop at at underscore country squire. Of course, the show's handle as well as at squire radio. Shia LaBeouf, that's the kid's name. I, I've never heard of that person. Yeah, he's a, the, the Twitter, Mark VV and Brad and Byron, that y'all, y'all, thank y'all for they that. They bird dogged it and, now, we, and now we have an answer. Yeah, that, that was driving me crazy. It was absolutely driving me crazy. But no, that you know, so that he's an actor that no one likes. Nobody really I, likes I don't him. like him at all because apparently I didn't know who he was. I had a buddy that was in his television <laughs> show. Yeah, no, he, he's I, you know I think he's just kind of an, an interesting personality, and he's not that good. He was, <laughs> you know what? This this really bugs me. He was in Indiana. Remember when they made Indiana Jones four? Like like uh, oh yeah, it was awful. He played oh. Indiana Jones kid, the yeah. one that was like swinging okay. around with the monkeys. Okay, yeah, he's terrible. That guy. Yeah. Oh. Hey, but shy if you listen. Uh, hey, maybe use a pipe smoke. We'd love to have you on the show, buddy. Yeah, hey, yeah. yeah as long as you wear the paper bag on your head. No, 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 no. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll take you however we can get you. <laughs> At this point, we're just you know, we'll take what we can get, right? Take what we can get. Yeah, I know, I know. Take, That's take it. What we can get. Absolutely. Well, uh, hey guys, thank y'all so much for tuning in. And yeah. man, I, I, got, I just got to say it before we uh, we officially sign off. Congratulations yet again, uh, man. I, I I can't tell you how excited I was. Uh, to hear that you were planning on popping the question, man. Thank you, brother. Uh, it was it was difficult to keep the secret because you yeah, know, it literally yeah. happened. I don't know that we mentioned this at the top of the show, but it literally happened the day after the Texas Pipe it, Show. It, it did, you know, and, and and you were in on it, right? So, uh, you know, I'm staying with Bo. We're at the Texas Pipe Show. We flew uh, straight from from Dallas to uh, New England. Uh, me and my now fiance did, and uh, Bo was such a such a trooper. He was encouraging to me that evening. He, uh, you know, just gave me a lot of support. And, uh, and, and you, um, and, and, and you are, have agreed and, and are, and are kind enough to, uh, have agreed to be, uh, to, to stand next to me oh, when I get married. Man, so, I'm, I'm so, uh, excited. so but Bo's going to be, Bo's going to be on the A team, uh, making sure, uh, no one runs bachelor away from the altar. Party, so. <laughs> podcast, bachelor party. It's happening. I don't know how, it's but it's going to be happening. great, man. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, we're really, really thrilled. And, uh, man, thanks for all the well wishes. Oh, absolutely, man. All right. Well, Hey, let's go have a night. See you brother. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Uh, I dedicate all of these roses, uh, you know, to the marriage and everything else. But I, I dedicate <laughs> these white roses right here uh, to all of my my friends and and family out in Yorkshire. Uh, you guys represent well. UK Pipe Show, this is awesome. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have anything for the for the Lang <laughs> Lang Lancashire. So uh, Yorkshire, that's ridiculous. It's awesome. I wait, either either way, we'll be excited. Man, we're so fired up about the uh, about the uh, the contest. Right? Absolutely. Yep. Bye, guys. <laughs>